Solving the problem of uterine infertility has long been an impossible dream, but now, for women who can't bear children because of it, dreams are coming true. It's the future of health. Hello everyone, I'm Robin Roberts. For some women, the news that they can never carry a child is devastating, but that could change. We're about to show you how the miracle of life can be delivered by a true miracle of modern medicine. When I first found out I was born without a womb, I was in shock. It's kind of like time stopped. Christina Ruth was diagnosed with MRKH. She is among hundreds of thousands of women in the U.S. suffering from various types of uterine infertility. I was sitting with the doctor and the doctor actually said to me, you won't be able to have children. It was terrible. It's the absence of her uterus that makes her unable to sustain a pregnancy. If I could have the opportunity to carry my own baby, it would mean everything to me. Though it's hard to imagine, soon Christina's dream of carrying her own child may become a reality, thanks to the work being done over 5,000 miles away in Sweden. In September of 2014, baby Vincent came into the world, and the sound of his cry announced not only his own arrival, but the unbelievable news that he is the product of a womb transplant, the first ever to succeed. Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. It's a fantastic feeling. I really felt like a mother at the first time. So even if I have had years and years of sorrow and loss of hope, um, at the first touch and when I saw my baby, uh, I just felt as a mother. Vincent's mom, who wishes to stay anonymous, also suffered from uterine infertility. It's still the only type of infertility you cannot cure. Mats Brandstrom, the pioneering doctor who helped her, is professor of obstetrics and gynecology at the University of Gothenburg. He led the research for the womb transplant trial, which included nine women. They are very brave women, actually, that they are dared to take part in this because it uh, was big surgery. We couldn't guarantee anything at all. But Brandstrom was convinced it could work. And soon after baby Vincent, came more big news. Now we have three babies born actually from this procedure. We have ongoing pregnancies, so we're expecting some more deliveries this, later this year. Proud papa of this groundbreaking infertility treatment, Dr. Brandstrom has worked for 15 years to perfect a procedure considered highly experimental. It's a complicated surgery because it's very delicate because you know the uterus in, is in the pelvis, so it's like operating in a funnel. They begin with a womb donor, often a mother or close relative. The complete uterus is detached. So that takes about 10 to 12 hours, and another team has started to operate on the recipient to prepare her for the uterus transplantation. One of the greatest difficulties, making sure the web of very tiny blood vessels that support the uterus are all in place when the uterus is attached to the recipient. And then we uh, put it in the right position in the pelvis and then we close it up. We also make sure that it's good blood flow to the uterus and so on before we start to attempt a pregnancy. As with any organ transplant, there are serious risks along the way, which is causing some controversy. Some critics will say with other organ transplant, it saves lives. Right. This does not do that, so the approval and the acceptance will it be a little more difficult to achieve? In this country, there is significant concern about why you're doing a procedure that can cause real injury, potentially even death, to somebody involved when it's not really saving their life. Still, the success rate of this trial has been remarkable. And now, Dr. Brandstrom's innovations are inspiring American doctors working to bring the procedure to the U.S. I know there are activities in one or two centers and they're seeking ethical permission and so on, so I think you'll probably see the first womb transplant in late 2015. And looking forward, Dr. Brandstrom is anticipating another breakthrough in womb transplants, growing a uterus by using the woman's own cells. So the idea now is to create a uterus in the lab 
which means if they succeed, there's no need to put a donor at risk. And for the recipient of the uterus... She would not have to take any immunosuppressive medication because she will not reject that. And in the same way Brandstrom once predicted wound transplants would be possible, he now predicts growing a womb is in our near future. I think this is something which is going to take five or ten years, but I'm sure that it will be there. Meanwhile, from Sweden to Texas and the world over, this is a story that inspires hope. I would cherish it more than anything if I could carry my own baby. I think it's something I would hold very dear to my heart and it would be a connection that I really yearn for. The message to all these women would be of course now we have a treatment, we have found a cure. <laughs>